If you're someone who loves to make cute Halloween cards or tags, this video is for you. Hi everyone, I'm Rebecca Keppel, and in today's video I am sharing the latest release from Pretty Pink Posh, which includes the cutest little images of ghosts, bats, candy corn, a shaker cauldron, and much more. I want to make sure that all these adorable supplies get some time in this video, so I am going to just jump into the card making and I'll share these new products along the way. We're starting off with the Layered Ghost Stencils. This is a three stencil layering set. The first layer are the little ghost shapes. Now you could do this in a very light color and just do these ghost shapes on your card, say a really light orange or even a light black or gray. I decided to go wild with the colors today. So I started with Kitsch Flamingo for the ghosts and then I'm gonna take a small detail shader brush and add a little bit of carved pumpkin starting from the bottom of the ghost and sweeping up. And that is the benefit of using those small brushes. You don't have to cover the whole shape, but you get this two-toned effect, which I think is so much fun, especially in different colors like this. Now I'm gonna use a really teeny tiny detail shader brush so that I can just put black soot distress oxide on the faces of those ghosts. So oxides sit on top of each other so the black is not going to sink in. It's gonna really show up nicely on those pink little ghosts with the little orange bottoms. The third stencil has some stars. So I'm going to use some of the stars covered with twisted citron distress oxide and some covered with villainous potion. So that again is the benefit of using a tiny little blender brush like that is you can cover up just what you want with ink. It also saves you a lot of ink. You're not covering the whole stencil and I just love these little guys. I almost didn't want to cut them down. I wanted to just use the six by six as a little sign to put somewhere for Halloween, but I decided to cut them down. They look really cute cut down as well and matted on some pink cardstock. And then I'm going to use the Boo script die and I'm cutting it out of some black foam that I got from Spellbinders and I'm using some Ultra Bond liquid glue behind that foam. This is going to be a nice dimensional sentiment. It's popped up because it is foam, but it's a nice true black as well. For the next card, I'm going to use the Halloween envelopes stamp set and matching dies so you can see you get these main little envelope images with some things coming out of them and I'm going to color this first one that has the candies coming out with some Copic markers so I'm doing some pretty basic blending and shading here I did want to get a little bit of the image darker on the sides and lighter in the center. That's for me always a really easy way to go with light source. So I don't have to remember, okay, light's coming from this angle. It's going down in this angle. If they just do it in the center, <laughs> then that's very easy to remember. And for the candies, they're kind of tiny. So I am mainly just coloring them in and then the larger ones may be doing a teeny tiny bit of blending. I'm gonna use some pixie tape to hold that die in place. Love hand having the dies to cut them out. This is the layered candy corn stencils. Again, you get three stencils in this set and they create a bunch of candy corns to create a background. So I'm working with wild honey first and I'm using a larger blending brush so I can cover the entire stencil this time instead of going in and trying to do each one one at a time. And I wanted this to really show up and definitely the wild honey was the best color on the black cardstock. Once you get to the squeeze lemonade, maybe I needed a little more ink on my pad, but it doesn't, it's more hazy than an actual opaque look. It still looks good. Absolutely, I still love the look of it. So I'm gonna finish it off with the top of the candy corn with some Hero Arts white pigment ink. And this time I am using the blending brush because the white pigment ink is very sticky and I didn't wanna get tons of that ink all over the stencil. I figured I would save some ink and also save me washing that stencil, but the unicorn ink actually looks really good on the black cardstock. 
To kind of juice up the rest of the colors though, I decided to grab a few Prismacolor pencils and just color in the images with those pencils right over the ink. Of course, I waited until they were fully dried, but you can see how the Prismacolor pencils really pop on the black background. So if you're ever struggling to get even Distress Oxides to show up on a dark color of cardstock, I definitely recommend some Prismacolor pencils. They are nice and creamy, and so they're easy to color in those images and cover them up as well. I'm gonna trim this down again to four by uh, five and a quarter so that I can mat it on some orange cardstock. And I'm gonna grab one of the little sentiments from the stamp set. I'm gonna put it right on the envelope. There's also a little banner die that I'll show you later. But for this one, I decided to put that sentiment right on the envelope. I'm going to use some anti-static powder all over that envelope. Make sure that envelope is nice and dry as well before you stamp on it. And then I am going to stamp it with some Versamark ink and pour some white embossing powder on top so that I can heat set that to melt the embossing powder and have that trick-or-treat really stand out on that little envelope. I'm going to adhere the candy corn background down to the orange cardstock with some tape runner and then I'm going to put some foam tape behind the envelope so that I can pop that up. That background is a little busy so I thought popping up the image would really help it stand out against my background there. Okay the next stamp set is called Ghost Friends. There's also matching down to cut it out. Now for these little ghosts, I wanted them mainly to stay white, but I am gonna put some little accents of neutral zero from the Copic marker set on the ghost to add a little bit of shading. Some of it is going to be, you know, just how I normally would color little lines, but I also did put these little dots all along the little heads of the ghosts and some of them at the bottom as well. And they look really cute in person. It's hard to see in video, but it's just an easy way to add a little bit of accent to an image like this that you want to mainly stay white, but you wanna have a little bit of color. I'm gonna add some pink to their cheeks as well. I thought these are such cute little ghosts that they would definitely have little pink cheeks. I did cut out also with the dyes some stars, a single star, and then a bow. And I'm gonna use all of these pieces on my card. So I cut them all out and then I used a sentiment from the stamp set, it says boo to you, on a four by five and a quarter piece of white cardstock matted on some gray cardstock. And now I am going to pop everything up on foam tape and just have fun placing these little cuties all along the card. So I have the main ghost or the larger ghost who's straight in the center and then the two little ones that are kind of floating off to the sides there. I have a couple of the stars and then the little bow on that one and I love that clean and simple look for these little cute ghosts because they are just so adorable they steal the show. Okay for the next envelope I am going to color it in again with Copic markers. That one that I was showing you there it was drying out. It definitely needs a refill. So if you notice white spots as you start to color with either the brush end or the chisel tip, you can definitely realize that it needs to be refilled. So it won't always be completely dried out. It will sort of just be tough to blend and it will show those white spots. So I had to swap it out mid color with something else. And you know, these colors actually weren't necessarily blending fabulous together, especially because I'd put down that dry marker first, but I just kind of kept going at it. And I like the way it ends up looking, even though it maybe isn't a perfect blend. So don't give up, just keep going and see if you can make it work for the card that you're creating. I thought for a Halloween card, even that darker edge was kind of fun for this. I colored in the little Frankenstein head. There's a little ghost, a spider and cute little bats. And I'm going to stamp this time another sentiment from the stamp set on that banner die cut. I did cut it out first and then stamp it on the die cut because it is a uh, full full die. So it's not cut out. So you can't see where it's going to go. So I like to cut it out first. You can use some of these stencils like these little stars from the ghost layering stencil on their own as well. Just like you could have used the ghosts on their own. I'm using just the stars and I'm putting a bunch of twisted citron and villainous potion stars on this background because they coordinate really great with the colors that I use in the envelope. I cut it down to four by five and a half. So there's just matting on the sides and it's black cardstock underneath 
and then just pop up that envelope. So I love these colors for Halloween. I love the pinks and oranges, but I also love the traditional more purple and green and black. It's a lot of fun. So that envelope stamp set also comes with all these little accessories, teeny tiny little ghosts, little cute bats, tiny little spiders. So I am popping them up on some bits of foam tape, and then I'm just gonna add a few dots and little accents with a white gel pen over that Copic coloring. So there you can see those little bits of white gel pen just adds a little something fun. Okay, this is the spider web die. This is super cute. You get the spider web and the little spider in this die set. I am going to back the open eyes and mouth with some white cardstock. So I'm just gonna put behind the spider a little bit of Ultramon liquid glue, and then I cut a little small circle of white cardstock just to back it because I want it popped up on the spider web and the background is white, so I thought it would just kind of get lost, that little face. And then I decided to add some googly eyes to that little spider. He is so cute as well with his little smile and the googly eyes really add a little something cute to him as well. I cut out the spiderweb die in silver mirror cardstock and that black fun foam that I was working with before from Spellbinders. I cut the boo die again out of the black foam and I also cut a spider out of black foam. This way I can pop everything up really easily just by adhering those pieces together. So the cardstock adheres down to the die cut piece of foam and it adds the perfect amount of dimension across the entire die cut. So again, same thing with the spider web. I cut it out of the black fun foam and then added the mirror cardstock on top. And then you just wanna use probably liquid glue again behind the foam, foam because it's tough to adhere without a good strong liquid glue. I'm going to adhere the boo sentiment right above that spider web. I only did one layer of the boo. I thought that was fine. It really stands out on the white background just fine. And then a little bit of liquid adhesive behind the popped up spider so that you can place him or her right on your web there. And those little googly eyes just crack me up because like they're going in different directions. <laughs> okay, this is the layered pumpkins stencil set. And this comes with three stencils as well. So I am going to cover the entire pumpkin background with carved pumpkin distress oxide ink. I thought that was fitting. You could definitely do different colors here. You could do kind of a gradient of color there. I also put down the stems and I'm covering that with mowed lawn. Here I'm using kind of a medium shader brush just because I didn't want to cover the whole thing with green ink when it was just those little stems that I was covering up there. Okay, I am using pixie tape to hold the stencil in place over the cardstock that I've already ink blended, and I'm gonna use some Brutus Monroe candy coat in yellow to add some glowy eyes and mouths to these pumpkins. So I'm just using my uh, Tonic Studios spatula here to one by one cover up the eyes and mouth. So you can see every pumpkin does not have an, uh, a face like this. So you can just do them one at a time. You don't have to cover again the whole stencil with the candy coat and then have to, you know, wash off that. Obviously, I'm still going to wash the stencil, but you know what I mean. I don't have to use all that candy coat up covering it up. Now, it did kind of fall into the background of the pumpkins, but that's okay because that's going to be my background for a shaker. I'm gonna use the cauldron shaker die. I cut it out of black cardstock here, and that's the frame. So I'm gonna put that down on the background, and then I'm gonna put this piece that normally pops out because you don't use the frame for the shaker. I'm doing that so I have a background to adhere my shaker to. It just makes it easier to figure out exactly where to put it. Also, I want my shaker to look like it is black inside. I don't want the pumpkins showing through the shaker. So that's why I put that inside piece. Now I have two pieces of black foam and I adhered them together to create enough height for my shaker to have movement and be able to put shaker goodies inside. I'm gonna put liquid glue all around that image so that it stays stuck down and also so that it keeps the shaker goodies inside the shaker. I have another piece of black cardstock cut out with that same die. This is just the frame this time. I don't need to use the inside piece. I'm gonna use liquid glue all around the shape again, just to make sure it stays stuck down. Once I have the liquid glue on it, I'm gonna place it on some 
acetate and press that down. And then I'm gonna set that aside to dry. So now that the cauldron itself has dried a little bit, I'm gonna use these new shaker goodies from Pretty Pink Posh. And I'm gonna pour a bunch right in the body of the cauldron. Once the acetate with the cardstock was dry, I just fussy cut around it to create my shaker window and then flip it over and put some liquid glue behind it. And again, just making sure to put the liquid glue all around the shape so that it traps those shaker goodies outside so nobody escapes. Because the last thing you want is to give somebody a shaker cart and then have them take it out and the shaker goodies get dumped all over their lap. I mean, maybe you want that sometimes. It's fun for a little confetti coming out, but in this case, I wanted to keep them inside. Now I'm going to use some anti-static powder tool on black cardstock, and I'm going to stamp a sentiment from one of the other stamp sets, and I'm gonna heat emboss it with some silver sparkle embossing powder, and I love the way that the glitter and the silver embossing powder are mixed in that. I'm just gonna buff away any of that anti-static powder tool and cut out that sentiment. I also cut out the same die out of foam so that I could pop this sentiment up without having to put little bits of black foam squares behind it. This is a really easy way to add some dimension to those scripty sentiments. And then once that is dry, I flip it over and put liquid glue behind it and adhere it above my cauldron. And there is my shaker cauldron, which is so much fun to make. I don't know about you, but this release has me super excited about fall and Halloween. Let me know in the comments below which your favorite was today. If you haven't yet, don't forget to head to my blog post, which will be listed in the description below the video, where you can enter to win one of three $30 gift cards that Pretty Pink Posh has given away to their shop. As always, I want to thank you so much for spending time with me today. Please stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you again soon. If you're... If you're I mean... <laughs> Someone who loves to make cute Halloween or tags. Halloween or tags. <laughs> okay, are you making some cute Halloween? <laughs> That's great. That's really great. Okay. <laughs>